everyone. Welcome to our feature spotlight training session focusing on sharing your artwork using Artwork Archive's public profile. I'll let everyone kind of gather in and join. And while we wait, if you wouldn't mind, introduce yourself in the chat, your name, where you're from, type of art you make, how long you've been using Artwork Archive. It's always fun to see who's joining us and from where. Okay, so I'm going to cover a few housekeeping items before we get completely into the product. So this webinar will be recorded and we'll share the recording within 24 hours for all of you who registered along with slides um, and any kind of major topics we cover. I'll try and uh, give access links to more help docs and that sort of thing. And then I've saved a few minutes at the end for questions too. So if those are coming up and percolating during the webinar, feel free to use the Q&A box down below to send any questions you have. Um, and that's different from the chat box. So the chat is a really great informal place for us to get to know each other and any technical issues. Um, and those are also really great if there are any questions that you wanna ask you know, the fellow attendees that maybe you wanna get guidance on, but I will be pulling from the Q&A box primarily for the Q&A at the end. Cause sometimes questions can get lost in the chat. And if I'm not keeping track of them or looking at them every so often, the chat will kind of push the questions up. So be sure if you really wanna get a question answered, use the Q&A box. And then if we'll try to get to all the questions at the end, but if I don't, then you can also just send us an email at team at artworkarchive.com. <clears throat> or you can also email me directly at cassidy at artworkarchive.com. We really pride ourselves on customer service and you won't talk to a robot ever. It's always our team. So you can also use the little chat icon. It's like a little chat box down in the bottom right hand corner of your screen when you're in Artwork Archive. That sends it directly to our team. So if you thought of a question, didn't get it answered, or thought of a question later, you can always reach out to us. Um, if you need access to captionings, you can click the live transcript on the bottom panel and then select show subtitle. So this feature is actually only available if you have the app version of Zoom and aren't viewing it on a browser, but that is also available for you. If you're on an iPad or mobile device, you may need to click on the three dots on the bottom of your screen to access Q&A or chat box. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I think we have enough gathered here. I'm checking the poll too. Yes, a lot of artists. Yep, incredible. This is primarily geared towards artist accounts. So we also have resources on more collector and organization accounts, but this one is really focusing on the artist one. Although the public profile is pretty general enough that you can um, gain so much insight if you're also using a different type of um, account as well. Oh, a lot of, okay, I see a lot of percentage of people who have never used the public profile. This is really exciting to me, or you've explored it a little bit. That's really great. There's, we're gonna get down into the nitty gritty of it. So I'm excited to see that and setting it up. Yes, first webinar, welcome. We host these webinars pretty frequently and we're doing more feature spotlights um, coming up specifically on features. So, you know, sometimes on an overview, we kind of, touch on different features, but there's so much to each one. So we're trying to really give you valuable insight and a deep dive to where, you know, if maybe you're really great at reports, but you're not so familiar with the public profile, that's what these are for. I'm gonna end that poll. So just to introduce myself, cause I didn't do that yet. I'm Cassidy, I'm the product education lead here at Artwork Archive. I help train new and existing clients on how to use the platform. And I provide educational videos on our many features. And I'm also an artist based in Los Angeles. So before I even joined the team here at Artwork Archive, I was using Artwork Archive for a while as an artist to archive my personal studio practice. So it's really fun to be able to now help a lot of other people like I was doing before anyways, um, and get to teach artists all over the world. And in case you're not new or you are new or you're not as familiar with Artwork Archive, a little history is we began in 2010 as one of the first cloud-based art inventory systems. 
Our story actually began after one of our founder's mother, who's an oil painter, lost years of valuable information after one of her hard drives crashed. He couldn't find a solution custom tailored for artists. So he started one himself and the rest is history. <laughs> he uh, is a software engineer. So really came naturally to him. And then we now serve artists in over 130 countries and collectors and organizations. And our company has just grown to really dive into what artists need, what art organizations need, how collectors want to keep track of their work. Um, it's really our passion to help artists, collectors, organizations manage their art careers and collections. And we take user feedback extremely seriously. And that's what dictates a lot of our future upgrades. So if you ever have feedback or have questions or any comments on any part of the platform, we really value that. And we're open open ears all the time. So if you've been with us long enough, you know that, and you know that we like to keep upgrading it based on what everyone actually needs. And we like to think of Artwork Archive really as an extension of your studio. So we're cloud-based on purpose. It's really intentional because you get all the benefits of being able to access your data anywhere, anytime, on any device with having enterprise level security and the peace of mind, knowing that your data is safe and secure without the drawbacks of a downloadable system. So something that's really important to us is as we're continuously upgrading the program, you're able to access those upgrades in real time immediately without having to download a newer version, et cetera. It's a real um, plus for us. And you don't need to download an app. You can use it on any kind of phone, any kind of device, iPad, computer, et cetera. And we take security very seriously. I'll touch on that in a moment too. So as a reminder, this is a feature spotlight. So we're gonna be focusing on Artwork Archive's public profile. I'll give you an overview of the benefits of having one, how to set up one, customize it to make it your own, how to share your public profile to really grow your career, and even how to use it in conjunction with an already existing web presence. So I'll also have time for any questions in the Q&A box too, if any of those points uh, throughout the webinar kind of bring up something that you're confused about. And real quick, if this feels too advanced or you want a more general overview of the platform, I highly recommend you checking out one of our 101 Getting Started training sessions with me again. <laughs> um, and those happen about twice a month on Wednesdays as well, or I guess it's Thursday now. Wow, it's Thursday. So those happens on, happen on Wednesdays. We just had one yesterday, but we also have a pre-recorded version as well. If you wanna be able to access that on your own time and you're not able to make the live ones, the live's are really fun because it's active in the chat and we answer different questions, but we also have one that you can watch at your own pace. So just reach out to me afterwards if you'd like a link to that. I'll send it in the follow-up email as well. Um, it's a really great way to learn more about your account in general, make sure you're making the most out of it. And then I cover a really general overview of each feature and give you kind of the lay of the land of your dashboard. And then we also dive into some specific reports. Um, also along that line, we had a feature spotlight on reports last month, and that recording is in on our webinars page. And I'll include a link to that as well in the follow-up. But that covers, we went deep into all the different kinds of reports that you can make using Artwork Archive and the best use case, some examples. Um, we covered a lot there. So if you want to watch that, we there is no, you know, you don't have to pay, you don't have to put your email or anything for that. That is free on our webinar page. So we want it to be as useful to you as possible. Feel free to share it. Feel free to ask questions about it. Go for it. Um, and again, yes, this will be recorded and I will send you a link to the recording. Sometimes that gets lost um, or people join later and don't know if that's true. But yes, I will be sending a recording in the follow-up email after this session. So you can go back, watch it at your own pace and I'll send the slides. 
Okay, I think got all of that covered. Let's dive in. Thank you all for joining me again. So great to have so many people from all over here all at once. That's really cool about technology. So if you logged into your account and you wondered, you know, what is that uh, my profile section at the bottom left-hand corner of your menu? You've come to the right place. So in our work archive, a public profile is an easy and professional way to really showcase your work and share who you are as an artist. It's a great way to gain additional exposure, boost SEO, and it's really an invaluable asset for any artist looking to grow their business. So it's also conveniently linked directly to your inventory in Artwork Archive. So you never have to worry about separately updating works from your inventory onto your profile. It essentially what I like to describe it is as a public facing option that you can use for your internal inventory in Artwork Archive. And we have quite a few ways to share your work privately, like private rooms and reports, you know, like inventory reports, which are really great for individual collectors or gallery shows, et cetera. But public profiles are a really excellent way to open up that inventory and share to a much wider audience. But I wanted to show you quickly too, if you prefer to share your work in a more bespoke or private manner, so to a few collectors, individuals, you know, a few people at a time, I really highly recommend using our private rooms feature actually. That, so that can go hand in hand. So the main difference is that with private rooms, you never have to make any of your pieces public. It's You only are sharing what you add into a private room. You can password protect it. You can allow for more customization in terms of what information you share. And you can even collaborate with your recipients by allowing them to favorite and comment on pieces that you send. And something else to keep in mind is that with a public profile, we really do take extra care with our security measures to prevent copying work, scraping work from the site, no right click to save. And we also automatically downsize your images for web purposes. We, we really care about that because we know how important it is for artistic integrity. But in a private room, you can actually enable people to send those works to download so the works that you're sending in a private room, you can enable people to download the original high resolution images directly from your inventory. So that's really great to share with galleries, publications, you know, important collectors, people who really need to have access to that higher resolution image and more quality, more detailed information. That's how you wanna share that. You wanna use a private room. Um, because you can't allow download on public profile. And that's the main difference. Because um, some people really don't want to make any of their inventory public on a public profile. And you don't have to at all. You never have to make it public. Because by default, everything is private. But I just wanted to give you those differences. If you're, you know, feeling like public profile is great. I don't know if it's for me. The private option, the private rooms option is a really great solution to that as well, where you can share your work. Um, but let's get back to the public profile because that's what we're all here for. So you may ask, you know, a lot of people ask, what can I use this as a website? Is, is that what the public profile is? And while we do really have a number of people using Artwork Archive's public profile as kind of their main artist site, it actually wasn't our intent when creating it. So the public profile is an easy way for artists to showcase their work, share who they are as an artist, and amplify their already existing web presence. Because we really believe having a website that you have 100% control over versus a one-size-fits-all template is really important. And we recommend looking at the public profile as more of a complement to that site, which is even more possible with our embed option to integrate your inventory into a website like Squarespace, Wix, WordPress, et cetera. Um, and I'll touch on that a little bit later in this webinar. But that's something to keep in mind as well, because, you know, we are really focused on managing your 
art inventory in your career and providing that main inventory organization. We are not a website company because so many places out there are already doing a really fantastic job where that's their sole purpose. So that's something important that we want to mention is, yes, you can use it as a artist website, but just know that there are limitations in terms of customization using the public profile as a website. Um, but I'll show you how you can kind of have the best of both worlds. And there are a few main elements to the public profile. And I wanna also begin this webinar by showing you an example of a completed profile. And then we'll dive into the back end of what it looks like to set one up. But I think this will really help give more context when we're looking at the back end setting up information. Because first, I want to show you this is what it looks like. Here's where this information is going to end up. And then we'll go in and I'll show you where you can add it all. So, and just to be clear, again, by default, all of your information is private in your artwork archive account. Even when you choose to make your profile public, you can still protect it with a password. And even beyond that, you can customize what information you want to share. This is not a default thing that you have to decide to do. Okay, how are we doing? Is everyone, is this a good pace? Is everyone keeping up? Are you excited? Are you awake? I'm going to share a different screen, but I just wanted to do a quick check-in. Great, okay. Sounds like we're all doing pretty great. Yes, amazing. Okay, I'm gonna share a new screen. Oh, there we go, okay, share, let's see. Yes, there we go. Okay, great, there's a little bit of a delay, so now I'm seeing all the, all good, great info. Let's go, excellent pace. Okay, good. Sometimes, you know, you hear crickets and you're like, well, I hope everyone's doing all right, but that's great. You guys are awesome. So like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to show context. So this is what a public profile looks like when you've filled in, you know, must have, much, of, bleh, much of your information, most of your information. So, you have basic stuff like name, location, short description. You can link your social profiles like an Instagram account, Facebook, Twitter. If you have another website, or maybe this is a link to, you know, a gallery that's showing your work or a print shop, you can kind of add whatever you want there. And here you have the option for visitors to send you a direct message, followed by different pages to include like your portfolio of work an about page, news, or blog. Um, and then also I've enabled my collections to be viewed here. Up at the top, this is where I've enabled the option to filter between you know, available or sold or all of the above. And also I've enabled a search bar so people can type in if there's a specific piece they're looking for. And then let's flip through these pages to kind of get a visual for context. So. About is where you'll share your bio, artist statement, and CV if you have one. You can also include a great cover image um, to show off, you know, you in action and your studio or specific piece, for example. It just gives a great opportunity to further showcase who you are beyond just, you know, this profile image. And a lot of people add, you know, their logo here instead of this profile image. It really depends on what you prefer. So when filling out your bio and statement too, there's actually no word or character limit. So if you are more long-winded there or have a bunch of information, you can add as much or as little as you like. It will, you know, extend the page, but that's something that's pretty great is you don't have to worry about squeezing it all into a particular word count. Uh, like here, you know, there's a way to show the CV in two ways. So as an example, we've added the CV in this um, bio so that it's, you know, expanded. And then you'll have the statement section, but you can also attach your CV or resume here too, so that it opens up into a PDF in a separate window. Going to news. So news is where you can share posts about upcoming exhibitions, 
events, or you can write, you know, about past work or shows. You can use it as a blog. You can use it as a press page or whatever really feels right for you to share. It's just another opportunity to give you um, the chance to kind of spread more information about yourself. And then collections. So collections are really where you can visually group your work. And these are built first in the collections tab in your artwork archive account under the pieces section. And then you can choose to share them here on the public profile. So we've seen people get really creative with these collections and make them based on subject matter, you know, year, size. If you have a lot of work or really, you know, a lot of different kinds of work that you really want to segment to show those differences, this is a really great place to do that. So I'm going to click on a piece to show you what it looks like on this end as well. So when I click into a piece that is, you know, available or the status, um, you can see that I've got information down here. This is where the description that I've enabled. And I'm also caveat is a lot of these options I've enabled in the settings. So this can look really differently for you, depending on what you want to show. So, you know, I can include an installation shot. I can include, um, you know, images from a past show, a close up, a detailed shot. So that's what's really great. Um, and then you can also enable the option for people to inquire, purchase, and then share is just like you would if you were, you know, they'd want to share it on their Facebook or something like that, where it attaches to your public profile. So share is not stealing this artwork from you at all. Do not worry. Share is simply, you know, I really love this artist. I love this artwork. I want to send this piece to myself or send this link. So they'll send the link to this piece. They won't send the individual image. I know that sometimes that can be confusing. Um, and we actually don't have any shopping cart or one-click checkout options because most of our artists are selling one-of-a-kind works and really like the opportunity to form a relationship with the client because that way it's easier to work out shipping details with them, cover any questions that you may they may have in the process. Um, we're not trying to do you know drop shipping or competing with an e-commerce site because that's just not what the majority of our users needed. So what happens when people inquire or purchase, I'll show you here. So you can, I'll, you know, I'm interested in purchasing this piece. They will be prompted to fill out a purchase request or the inquires also, they'll fill out, you know, a request as well. I love this piece. I'd like to buy, um, and I am not a robot. So I'll show you what happens on the back end when someone does that. So message sent, and then you will create an invoice. So let's actually dive into that now, and I'll show you what that what happens when um, someone sends a purchase request. So purchase request will then go into, so here is my main dashboard. If that was not confusing, um, I logged into my account. Here's my main dashboard purchase requests. And because I didn't load it, it didn't show up. But normally there's a little green one here or number based on purchase requests. They'll show up in the inbox. And also you'll see that emailed to yourself as well. From here, that's where you create an invoice. You can, you know, view, you can reply, and the reply will take it, you know, personally to your personal email. Right now, we don't keep up with the messages directly in Artwork Archive because so many, we really focus on, you know, relational management too. So, you know, we don't take a cut from any of your sales or anything like that. We really are just trying to help facilitate a better relationship with you and your specific customer and client. So if you wanted to sell directly off your Artwork Archive public profile, you would then, you know, create an invoice. I can either create a new contact or I can sync if they've, you know, if I've got the contact in, in here already, but I can create a new contact. And then from there, I will click next. And here's the invoice. So I can add, you know, a new line item. If there's framing that I need to add, if there's shipping I need to add, 
This is where I can include payment buttons. So if in my account section here, I have attached my PayPal integration or my PayPal account, I've given my PayPal email, this is where that will happen. And you can allow them to pay digitally over you know, a, a URL to this invoice. You can also allow partial payments, which is really handy if you're dealing with commissions or someone wants to know, pay a percentage upfront. So I can enable that. Oh yeah, shipping costs, you can include here, you can include commissions. So I just wanted to show that flow real fast. And then, you know, I can save this invoice and then it's saved. And then I can immediately send it via the web. I can copy the URL to include in an email or I can generate a PDF one and attach it or print it out. So when I preview, here's the invoice that they would receive. And then they could, you know, if I had my PayPal set up, they could immediately pay via PayPal or debit, um, all of that information. So we're not diving into expenses or invoices. We have a whole separate webinar for that because that's really important to cover all at once. But I just wanted to show you the flow if you were interested in knowing what it looks like to buy a piece directly off your public profile. So I'm looking at the questions just to make sure. Okay, yes, okay, we are doing good. I see a lot of questions rolling in, I'm really hoping to get to those. So I'm gonna keep going through the content that I have to give you an overview and um, hopefully we'll be able to touch on a lot of those in the end. So let's dive into the back end of a public profile. So again, default, all your information in our work archive is private. I've already set mine to be public, so it'll show public here on the left. But if it's private, it'll say private here on the left. When you click my profile, you'll find all the various tabs up here to customize your public profile to your specific needs. So the tab you'll land on first is profile info. And right at the top, you'll find your unique profile URL here. This is what you can copy and share as the official link to your public profile. So this is kind of, you know, your website, your domain name. Um, you can edit it in another tab that I'll show you in a moment, but just right here is, you know, this is the link to your public profile. This is also the web address that you can use to forward an existing domain that you might have hosted elsewhere to your public profile. Um, and just a note, we don't host any domains or custom domains or custom URLs, um, nor can you edit this one to include your own custom domain. The artworkarchive.com in the front will always be in there. Um, but we have found users, you know, go to where they're hosting their, their domain, like Google domains, GoDaddy, et cetera, and follow the specific instructions from their domain provider on how to forward your domain. So if that's something that's interesting to you, it's called forwarding, forwarding your domain. Um, and you would just forward it forward. <laughs> it's a hard word for me to say right now to this URL. Uh, and that's something, you know, worth reaching out to your domain provider because each one is pretty different. Um, but it's a good thing to know. So from here, you're also able to customize your basic profile information. So the only required fields are name and email, but you can include a telephone, you know, your artist website, address of your studio or PO box. Uh, this will all show up on your public profile. So you can add as little or as much as you want. Here's also where you add those social links and you can include a footer too in your entire profile with more information or copyright information. This will be along the entire profile on every single page. Another thing to note is that this is actually the tab where you upload your profile image, logo, and your report header. So the report header will show up at the top when selecting and generating your reports or editing a PDF invoice. But this is where you upload those things here. So the logo usually shows up here in the corner too on your account, um, but this is where you upload those items. Under the About tab, you can include your cover photo like I showed you earlier and the short and long bio. And again, there is no word count or character limit, so you can add as little or as much as you'd like. 
here we go. This is the cover photo, short bio, um, and then long biography. And if you'd like to attach your CV or resume, this is where you can do that too. And it'll pull from any of the documents that you've pulled from additional docs. So reports and docs under here, go to my docs. You can upload different resumes, you know, all the different PDF kind of attachments that you want to include. That's where this is pulling from. So you'll have the option to, you know, select from different resumes. Because sometimes they just update faster than you can keep up. And keep in mind too that this about section will actually only show up just like the other sections if you have information in them. So if you have the bio, artist statement, text box, if you prefer not to have an about section show up, then just leave all the items blank and it won't appear. Moving to public settings. So this section is where you can customize exactly what information people will see about your work. And once you share your profile, here's also where you can officially make your profile public. And it will then change the status next to my profile in the left-hand navigation bar from private to public. So you always know if it's live or not. So I'm gonna show you, you know, this is what it looks like when it's private. It'll say private under my profile. If I want it to become public, I come up here to public settings, I click make my profile public, and this all opens up to then give me the option to choose exactly what I want to show up. So there's just so much. Um, it's changing your artwork archive URL here too. This is where, you know, if you want to change the name, what shows up in the end. And this is also where you can choose to password protect your public profile. So if I want a passphrase and don't want, let, want to let everyone um, have access to it, I can also do that. However, keep in mind that if you use password protection, your profile won't show up in our discovery platform or really any Google search results. So if that's more interesting to you, then um, I wouldn't password protect it. So you can decide how artworks show up on your profile page here by choosing from a list of different sorting options. Um, here's the if you want to do a custom order, that's also really, that's available to you. So you click, you know, custom order and then customize the ordering and you can select exactly what order you'd like it to show up on your main portfolio. And going back into our public settings page, you can decide what to include like prices, um, collections you've created. So you know, I can, this is where you choose the option of showing collections. Under here in our contact settings over here, you is where you enable video, I mean, viewers to inquire or purchase directly. So if you want those buttons to show up, here's where you do that. You can also choose to include whether you'd like to show a piece's current location or not, which is helpful if you have work at various exhibitions or, you know, public spaces different galleries, if you want to direct them to go see them at those specific places, um, that's where you can, that comes in handy. And then here is the display setting option too. Like I showed you the search bar that I had enabled. You can also, you know, show info below the piece instead of on the hover. You can do drop shadows. Um, you can have other artwork suggested and you can show the link to the discovery page on your profile. And you can choose how many pieces display. So there are a lot of options. Um, it's not fully customizable, but this is uh, what's available and it really comes in handy because you can customize it truly to what you need. So let's go to public pieces section now. This is where you'll choose which images you'd like to appear on your public profile page. So you can make your entire inventory public or private with one click or and that's with these clicks right here. Or you can also use our filter feature to help narrow down which pieces you want to add. So if I wanted only my all of my available work to show up, um, then I you know click status, available, and then come down here and make all of those public. Um, and it says, you know, are you sure? Yes. If you wanted to go in as well and you know remember what's public what's not 
then you can also come over here too and see public status. So what pieces of mine are private? None of them. What are public? All of them. So um, you can also go in and choose individually. I don't want this piece. I don't want this piece to show. And these will not show up on your public profile. So next is the my posts. This is where I showed you the news section. So you can share upcoming news, events, and updates with your audience. And anything you post here will show up on your public profile. A lot of people share past press releases, featured articles, blogs. Um, you can filter to see your posts over here, what's published, what's in draft. And then you can also always view you know, the news page at, to see what the preview looks like. And you can also click view, view profile anytime to see what the profile is gonna look like on the viewer's end. Okay, to the juicy part. Finally, let's explore the integrations tab. So here is where you'll find the universal embed codes, which enable you to display your public profile or a specific collection on any custom website built with platforms like Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, Faso, Weebly, um, and how you would do that is by copying this code here below and pasting, placing it on the HTML page on your website where you'd like it to display. Every website is different, um, but we do have some additional instructions specifically for your website and they're updating all the time. So if it looks out of date or if that doesn't work anymore, let us know because we'll um, create a new help doc to kind of walk through those steps. But we've seen artists get really creative with this because you can upload it, you can attach your portfolio or your inventory to your website. And then what's amazing is that it then mirrors whatever changes you make and then automatically updates from your artwork archive inventory account without any coding to kind of go back and forth. So. That's exciting to me. Um, and I know that a lot of artists are using that uh, to kind of be able to customize their own website fully. And then if they don't want to do the extra work of when a piece sells or, you know, wanting to know exactly what's available in their artwork archive inventory, they'll just use this embed code. Um, and over here is how you can find if you've created a collection over here. So under artwork where these collections are, on my profile on under integrations, those are reflected here. So if I wanted to only embed, you know, my geometric work and I had a page on my personal website where I could put only my geometric collection, that's what I would copy and embed it into my profile. I have some examples to show too that I'd love to share real fast. So let me click new share. I hope everyone's still doing all right. We're all doing good. Oh, I see people doing the integration. Amazing. Yes. That's so awesome. Feel free to send your website if you're doing integrations as well. We'd love to see more examples. We're always looking for more. So I'm going to share um, another page to show you these examples. So here we have this artist who, this is what it looks like when you embed. So I'm pretty sure this is a Weebly site and he's embedded uh, his inventory and this is what it looks like. So it looks similar to the public profile, um, you know, designed in that way, but it looks like it's native to his website, which is incredible. So you go down, shows sold, shows, you know, exactly what is reflected in his artwork archive inventory. Here's another website. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a WordPress site. So here's another example of, she's actually um, using collections. So this is what she's chosen to do this. And you click in each piece, there we go. And then she's able to see other work from that collection. Here is another example. This is a, I think this is a WordPress site. Um, and here we go, you know, it looks native. So when you're, she's enabled, you know, the sold, all available. So people can also filter above. 
And then here's someone who recently actually embedded into a FOSO site. So I know that a lot of people are using that as well. Um, this is what she was able to do. And she actually differentiated between collections as well. So that's just handy to see. I know that sometimes the best case, um, the best way to understand something is to see an example of it. So hopefully that's more helpful. Let me go back to where we were. So another option that you can do as well is our public link option. So we have a way to link your public pieces with, you know, if you do have a really robust e-commerce site or another website, um, I'll show you how to do that in an individual piece. You'd click, you know, oh, we just sold this. That was to me. Um, but let's say, let's go to a piece that's available. You know, let's say, let's edit this piece. Um, if I wanted to, you know, make this piece public on my public profile. But if I wanted that purchase button to go to a different website or go to a link that's already, you know, somewhere else, I would add that link directly here. So then when they click purchase um, here, it'll take them to, you know, my Shopify page or wherever they could buy directly if you didn't want to have to go through the artwork archive process of sending an invoice. So that's just something, an option, if that um, sounds better to you or works better with your workflow. And then once you've completed all these fields and feel like you're ready to go, you can always preview your public profile. Um, another thing I want to mention is that by activating your public profile, you're automatically uh, part of our discovery platform. Unless you have it password protected, then it won't show up there. But you can access discovery by clicking down here on resources and then discovery from inside your artwork archive account. And this is where we have a platform that's used by collectors, designers, architects, business owners, buyers of all types to find artwork. And this is also where we find our featured artists to showcase on our Instagram page. And this is a really great chance at just, you know, getting additional exposure, boosting your SEO. It's one of the main reasons why 90% of artists choose to activate their public profiles. So that's something that is... Um, a good incentive if you wanted to, you know, reach a wider audience. And then one more thing, I know we are running out of time, but I want to get to those questions. I just want to, I have so much, so many things I want to show you guys. So something else that you can do that we got, you know, very accustomed to during the pandemic is scanning QR codes. So for the professional and master artist account plans, you can create artwork labels with QR codes right from your account. So I'm going to click something to keep in mind too. When you're generating QR codes, there are three main options. So I'm going to show you how you can connect your public profile using these specific labels. So internal, there's internal public page custom link. The first option, the internal one is more for your internal reference. So this is, this will direct you or anyone who scans it to the internal art inventory page that's really for your own use for, you know, when you're logged in, if you use internal links and someone scans it and they don't have access to your account, then it'll just take them to like a random, it'll not random, it'll take them to artwork archive, but it'll prompt them to log in, which is because they're wanting to access your internal inventory with these internal links. So I use these for my own personal inventory management. So I put them on the back of a piece. If I'm, you know, coming or organizing my studio, et cetera. That's really great for those labels. The public page links, this is the choice most commonly used when you know you want to do art, an art show, you want to print these um, so that whoever scans the QR code, they will then go to more information on your piece on your public profile. So something to remember too is that you'll need to ensure that whatever pieces you're creating the public this, you know, QR tag for, make sure they're marked as public and add it to your public profile because if they're not, then when someone scans this, it won't take them to the piece. So it also won't create the label for it. So if your profile's password protected or not made public, you know, people won't be able to see more information about the piece. And QR codes are specifically attached to artworks in the system. You can't generate a QR code generally without attaching a piece. So 
This really is the best option for sharing your public profile because it will direct viewers right to the information about that specific piece. And then the last option is the custom link. So when choosing this option, you can create labels for artworks that include a QR code that links to any website page, place, whatever. It will be the same QR code for every single artwork on the, um, the labels that you generate. And it will only take the person who scans it to the link that you put into this text box. So if you're in a group show and you wanna you know, include a QR code to your personal website, I choose this option and input that URL here. So that way, when someone's interested in a piece, they walk up, scan the code. And if you don't want them to go to your public page where that piece information is, you can, you know, they can scan it. They can go to your personal website. They can go to a gallery website. They can go to, you know, a video of your, you talking about the piece. Um, and if you don't want it to, you know, if you also don't want, the public links, like public page links to go to a specific artwork, you can use this custom link to include the URL for your public profile. So they can just go to the main page instead um, and it won't go to a specific piece. So you can also send them to you know your bio, wh wherever. Um, and keep in mind that these only print one size and 10 per page. So that's something um, to keep in mind, but that's another way to share your public profile. Whew. Okay, that was a lot of information, but my hope is that, you know, you really better understand what the pu public profile is, um, you know, how to use it, what, it, it, you know, what use case is best for you, um, how to share it, how to grow your artwork archive, inventory, how to grow your art career. Um, if you have any specific questions and want to explore more about a particular topic, we have tons of additional resources, including webinars, video tutorials, help docs. Um, actually, let me show you real quick how to access that, because that's something that I want to make sure that everyone is aware of. So when you're in your Artwork Archive account down here in the Learning Center, Here's where these help docs are. So if I want to come in here and, you know, Squarespace, because I want to embed, here's a video tutorial made specifically on embedding your profile using the code into a Squarespace page. Um, and then going back to artwork, there's also here are webinars. This is where, you know, this is what we're doing today. This is where another upcoming webinar is happening. And this is where you can register for that 101 if you want a more general overview of the Artwork Archive account. So you'll click here and it'll take you to the Zoom link to register. And then also we have um, all of our video tutorials. Here's where discovery is, guides, our blog. Our blog is really helpful if you want to you know, search for how to grow following. That was someone, someone asked that. And, um, you know, we've got tons of resources here. Our team is so passionate about making sure artists are getting what they need to manage and grow their careers. So that is something that we've worked really hard to populate. And now I'd like to, um, also open it up for any questions. Let me take a look at the Q and A. Okay, it looks like, yeah, you guys are really taking advantage of the Q&A, I mean the um, QR codes, I love that. Okay, let me go up to top. So what's the difference between the purchase button and the inquiry button? That's a really great question. Um, the inquire button you can have on if a piece is not available and they can just reach out about that specific piece. You know, they can inquire, where is this now? Or, you know, tell me more, do you have any more like it? Um, and it's not connected to an invoice, whereas the purchase button is directly connected to an available piece that then you can create an invoice and, you know, make a sale from it. Does this apply to both artist and organizations account, organization accounts? So again, this was really focused on an artist public profile, but there's so much overlap between the public profile options in the collector, I mean, the organization accounts, um, collector accounts. So 
if there are some nuances to the options for organization accounts with, you know, you can showcase exhibitions. Um, and we have some really great examples of organizations that are taking full advantage of the public profile. So reach out to us. Um, you can even just send me an email after this if you want to see more examples. And I can connect you with the, my team members who really specialize in um, collector and organization accounts. Do additions show up on the public page along with collections? Yes, you can show your additions as well. That is, um, yeah, that is something, all, any work that you wanna show, additions including, included. Um, so I'm trying to know, is there practice, ways to do that? Um, can I use a redirect from my domain? Yeah, so thankfully, I, there are quite a few questions that we got to um, cover. Is the 101 available to prospective members? Yes, I can send you a link to the 101 in the follow-up. And then also um, we have a pre-recorded version. You can also sign up whenever it's anymore. Um, can one artwork have two QR codes simultaneously, an internal QR code and also a custom link when it is in a show? So actually, yes, um, because when you create that, you know, label, that QR code is attached to what you created the label on. So if you wanted to make an internal, you know, link with QR codes for your own internal purposes, I would just label them to, you know, know exactly which links go where. So if you want them, you know, the in, internal ones for you, you know, write internal or something or have it in a particular place. So then when you scan the public ones, you're not getting those confused, but yes. Um, for my embedding bags, only the public info that gets updated with information size. Is it only the public info that gets updated with integration to FASO? So, um, no. So when you are embedding your public profile into another website, it will directly mirror anything in your artwork archive account. So if you, you know, go into, if you've embedded it and then you go into a piece that is public, you edit all the information, that'll just be reflected on um, what you've embedded with the website where you've embedded the profile. So there's no you know, need to refresh or update. Um, it'll just be a direct mirror for that. So I'm going through, these are really great questions. How do you get your art on discovery? Hopefully I covered that where if your public profile is made public and it's not password protected, um, you're automatically added to discovery. Can you link the public profile on your Instagram account? Totally. You can just add um, that link to the public profile. Like I showed you that custom URL link and you can add it uh, in your Instagram. Uh, you can use it as you know a website um, URL. Can people like images on your public profile? So people can't like images on your public profile, but if you wanted, if you needed that kind of interaction with, a collector or a gallery, um, I would use the private rooms like I showed you. So here's an example. This is where in private rooms, you can go in and you can favorite, you can comment. That's what um, is available in the private rooms. Does AA Artwork Archive actively market discovery and try to drive traffic there? So our discovery platform actually ranks really high on SEO. Um, so yes, we, we do um, market our discovery platform. Can you put a link to this in other 101s? Yes, I will definitely send, I'll send that in a follow-up. Are the QR codes static? Can you change the URL of the QR once generated? So because we're generating PDFs, you'll need to put that you that custom URL, if you're generating, you'll need to regenerate um, for the QRL custom link. How are the QR codes sent to you when they're created? So when you create, I'll show you real fast. Let me go to share. And here, when you're creating the QR codes, it's just like a report. Um, and just like any other report here, they'll show up in your report section. And we generate, our reports are generated PDFs. So let's see if I have some that are 
already generated. So I can show you an example. Artwork labels. Let's see if this is, no, that's not the QR code. Okay, let me go, let me just go ahead and generate a new um, QR code. So new report, QR labels. I'm gonna do the public page links. I'm gonna include status, you know, available pieces. I'm gonna include, I'm just gonna do a couple just to give an example. Generate labels and then QR code labels here. It'll be pending. And once it's done, complete, I'll show you this. You'll download or you share. So this is what the QR code looks like. And then when I scan this, it'll take me to this piece on my public profile. Oh, the other ones must not. So I did three, but the other ones must not be marked as public because they didn't show up here. So if they're not marked as public, then they won't generate on a report. So that was a great example to show you because that we run into that a lot. Okay, unfortunately, I think we're out of time. I will go through the questions and try and answer them in the follow-up. Um, if you have any more specific questions, you know, go into the additional resources. If you aren't using Artwork Archive currently and want to explore more in the product, you can also try any of our plans for free for 14 days, no strings attached or credit card required because we really want this to be a good fit for you. And so it's really important that you get to try it out before subscribing to us. Um, if you had a trial before and you didn't get to take advantage of it, just reach out to us in the little chat icon, mention this webinar. We can extend it for you. That can be a you know special bonus for attending this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say thank you so much for attending. Um, I know that you know we have really busy schedules and taking an hour out of your day is you know pretty rare. So I really appreciate you attending this today.